Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the eighth and final semi-final in our 2024 Future Anything Grand Final Series. We've had seven amazing semi-finals. I hope you've been able to catch some of them so far. We have the pleasure of rounding out the process today, and I am super excited. In fact, I said on Tuesday, the running commentary is better than Christmas, which means perhaps our very own must be on the way. Do we see what I did there? Let's hope. All right. My name is Dan Dempsey and I am Future Anything's Director of Professional Learning. And I'm incredibly excited to be here. I can't wait to kickstart this final hour hearing from our young entrepreneurs' innovative ideas. Just before we do that, I'd like to take a moment to reflect on this map showing the traditional First Nations landowners. So I'm coming to you from future waters in Brisbane, Mianjin, on the lands of the Yagara and Turrbal people. And I'd like to take this moment to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, all gathering from today. Our First Nations people have been innovating for 60,000 years, highlighting that this has always been a land of education, following our first educators, our first creators, and our first innovators. So as an example of this, I'd love for you to take a second to think about this First Nations artifact. I wonder if you know what it might be. This is actually a water carrier made from a wallaby skin. This water carrier could in fact have held approximately six liters of water and it's tanned with the rim that prevents the water from escaping when the skin is carried upright. So this perhaps the first ever water bottles. Now, today we are so excited that you're joining us uh, from our Future Anything community and would particularly like to share your involvement with our finals process. So please get active on social media and of course, tag us in your posts so that we can share and get behind you as well. The key social media handles are on the screen. So let's share our support. Let's get around these young people as they pitch today. Today is in fact, stage two of our Activate program. Stage two is our semifinals. The first stage is the in-school program that our young people have been through. So over the course of a term, these incredible young entrepreneurs have been tapping into a mission. And it's been a variation of this to pitch an innovative idea that makes the world a better place. So within their school-based program, students have worked hard to identify a problem that they care about. They ideated, designed, developed, and then pitched an innovative idea. And then they had a chance to apply for our finals. Our 40 top 40 teams have come from around 300 total applications, about 600 young people applying for this stage of the finals. And we are super excited that we have our final five teams pitching today. The winner of each of our semifinals goes through to the 2024 grand final to pitch on stage. And that's joining an illustrious group, perhaps just like some of these past semi uh, past final winners. So in 2018, this is Tanika. Tanika produced an idea involving school socks where they were designed to be white above the surface to meet uniform guidelines, but underneath the shoe line were these amazing patterns designed by a local artist Tanika had partnered with. And the metaphor of her product called Shielded Socks was that you just don't know what's happening underneath the surface for a young person. Better yet, a portion of the profits from Tanika's socks were so, uh, went to Headspace so that more young people could get the support that they need. Or perhaps, our winner from this year's process could follow in the footsteps of our 2020 champions. I'm going to say it again, Aqua Shield. And yes, I say it like that every time. This team, three boys from the Sunshine Coast who pitched an idea that would remove the need for shark nets off the coastline. So they took technology that exists in wristbands worn by surfers 
that repel sharks. And then they pitched a solution that would attach that same technology to flotation devices at intervals off the coastline, which would create, yes, here it is again, aqua shield. And from one coast to another, in 2022, the boys with the mullets from the Goldie took to the stage to pitch their eco-friendly dog bed designed to be indestructible. How, might you ask? Well, using Kevlar. Yes, that's the material that's in bulletproof vests, but is also fully recyclable. They've created an indestructible dog bed called EcoBeds. So the real question is, will one of our five teams pitching in this last semi-final be the winner for 2024? Right. We have a fast action packed agenda for you today. Very soon, I'm going to introduce to you three incredible judges and we have uh, so much thanks for the judges to be here today and help us. They've got the difficult decision of choosing the winner and the runner up. We will hear five pitches. We will have some questions from our judges and we will have a people's choice vote at the end. So our pitch order for today is as follows. From regional Queensland, Emerald State High is Calm Charms. Fernie Grove State High, we have Bright Nights. We have Edugo Mobile Tutoring from Kenmore State High. Another regional team, this time South Australia, is Aura Routes from Loxton. And the team Shadow from the Queensland Academies for Health Sciences, our five teams for today. Now, how does the structure work? Well, teams have three minutes to pitch. And at the end, uh, uh, with 30 seconds to go, they will hear this sound. And then at the end of the pitch, they're going to hear these bells. So it's a hard three minute finish. At that point, we bring the judges back on screen and the judges will have four minutes for questions. That's around about a question each. And that is a chance for them to ask a clarifying question or something that might help them shape their decision making. At the end of the pitches, our judges pick a winner. The winner goes through to pitch on stage at the national grand final. Super exciting, right here at Brisbane. The runner-up will also go through the grand final as a showcase team, which is a market-type arrangement. And, of course, this is where you, our audience, come in. At the end of the eight semifinals, we have People's Choice winners. One of our People's Choice winners will receive a wildcard entry into the showcase also. So, today, at the end of the pitches, while the judges are deliberating, you get your chance through a QR code to vote for your favorite and give them a shot at that wild card entry. Now, time has come to bring in our three amazing judges for this semi-final. We're going to bring them on screen. Thank them so much for being here. We have Anastasia, and Anastasia is one of the academic leads and senior lecturers at QUT. We've got Zach Fook, the senior commercial strategist at the Busy Group and Abby Ballard from Relationships Australia, New South Wales. Thank you for being here. Give us a quick wave. All right. I'm going to give you a chance uh, around about a quick 60 seconds to introduce yourself. Tell us what you're looking for from our teams today and anything which you are excited about. Abby, can I start with you? Tell us a bit about yourself. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. My name's Abby, coming to you from Gadigal land today in Sydney, um, and I work at Relationships Australia and Communications. Um, I'm really just excited to see people who are super passionate about their idea, where, wherever it's at in its inception, just people who are passionate about what they're doing. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. That passion and potential is what we're looking for in our young people. Uh, Anastasia, I'm going to throw to you. Can you introduce yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Anastasia Tirina, uh, and as uh, Dan mentioned, I'm I'm teaching at QT. Uh, my background is design in design and visual communication in particular. And I guess as someone deeply passionate about fostering, you know, creativity and forward thinking solutions, I'm always excited to see projects that push the boundaries of what's possible. Uh, I'm drawn to projects that offer unique and creative solutions. But while big ideas are exciting, I also value practical and well thought out plans that demonstrate how these ideas can be actually realistically implemented. So successful innovation often involves teamwork. Uh, and I also appreciate projects that showcase effective collaboration and the ability to integrate these diverse skills uh, and viewpoints 
And of course, additional and very importantly, a passionate team is more likely to overcome obstacles and achieve their goals. So I guess that's what I'm looking for in your projects today. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so much good advice there. And Zach, thanks for being with us today. How are you? Yeah, going well. Thanks for having me. Um, my background's in social entrepreneurship. And so I've got a real passion for finding that alignment with um, people, planet, and obviously profit to make it all sustainable. Um, so that's what I'll be keeping an ear out for today. And um, yeah, can't wait to hear what um, you guys have been doing. And well done for making it this far as well. Awesome. Thank you so much to our three judges. We really can't do this without our amazing judges uh, for all of our semifinals. Uh, and we've got a great panel today. Right. Enough from me. I'm not the person you want to hear from. You're here watching to hear these incredible young people. So let's bring in our first pitching team from regional Queensland, Emerald State High School. We've got Calm Charms. Girls, how are you feeling? Good. <laughs> All right, hear a little bit of nervousness in the voice, but you've got this. All right, so I'm super excited to hear your pitch today. I'm going to stop talking and you can start whenever you are ready. Next slide. I've had anxiety for as long as I can remember, but it's not just me. A lot of us face the same pressures in daily life. Homework, exams, and the expectations to do well at school can create overwhelming stress. When your mind and body aren't at ease, it's hard to perform at your best or stay focused. Next slide. Fidgeting is a natural way our bodies cope with stress and help us stay focused. Whether it's picking your fingers, bouncing your legs, or clicking a pen, these small movements are forms of self-regulation that shift your focus away from racing thoughts, giving your mind a break. These actions provide mental relief and releases excess energy that can build up. Next, next slide. Our product idea is Italian charm bracelets with added fidgeting functions. The charms can be added or removed to customize the bracelet and adjust its size to your preference. This slide shows different Italian charm bracelets to help you visualize the vibe and aesthetics we're aiming for. Calm Charms is designed to be a more socially acceptable alternative to, to, do, to traditional fidget toys, letting you fidget without distracting others with leg movements, pen clicking, etc. Next slide. The Italian charm bracelet base costs $6 to produce and will be sold for $30. The slide shows various fidgetable charms and their estimated costs provided by our manufacturer, Cashin. The production costs for our charms include spinnable charms at $5, sensory charms at $3, pressable button charms at $7, and the watch charms at $10. The selling costs for each charm will be three times its production cost. Next slide. As listed on the current slide, our Italian charm bracelets offer unique features that set them apart from popular charm bracelets, like the Pandora Moment Snake Charm Bracelets. Next slide. We surveyed our classmates and they all mentioned discovering brands through social media platforms like TikTok and Instagram. To reach our target audience effectively, we plan to, put, we plan to partner with influencers who focus on mental health to promote our business. Additionally, to engage with our local community, we aim to collaborate with Headspace to introduce our products to their followers and clients. To further enhance our products, our classmates suggested offering different metal color options like gold, rose gold, and silver. We're also looking to create a wider range of jewelry styles that can that even more suitable and elegant, appealing to a broader customer base so many people can- Next slide. Perform better, live better, and feel better. Wow, great pitch. Thank you, Calm Charms. What a range that you've got there in your business. That's outstanding. We've got our three judges back on screen. So I'm going to throw to our judges to ask some questions. Zach, I'm going to come to you first. Anything you'd like to know from our team? Yeah, first of all, huge fan. I've got my little Thor spinny fidget here with me. Um, I guess what complements, um, obviously looking at anxiety and mental health, are there products or other services that would complement Calm charms that actually helps, I guess, to tackle the issue of mental health and anxiety. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that question. Sorry. So I was thinking, like, for example, you've partnered with Headspace. So there are other services um, that you might be able to refer to. So in collaborating with Headspace, you might, for example, create crafting groups. I'm probably giving you too much of a leading idea here, <laughs> um, but how you can create community around just a product. Um, well, we chose Headspace because it's like 
pretty local and very close to our school, but we can definitely um, collaborate with any other uh, mental health organizations. Yeah, it sounds like uh, Zach's given you some advice there on how you could expand your business. That's super cool. Um, Abby, I'm going to come to you next. Do you have a question to drill deeper into the idea? Yeah, I, I think it sounds really great. Um, what I'm interested in is it, you know, I think it works really well for high school students. I know there's maybe some jewellery, sometimes bands or, or specialties around what you wear at school. So um, have you thought about partnering with schools to encourage that that sort of jewellery is allowed? Um, well, for our school, jewellery isn't too serious of a problem, um, but we we could definitely, uh, I could talk to my friends from other schools and uh, ask them about their uh, rules and regulations to suit them. Yeah, great advice to get on top of those rules and regulations in schools for your target market. Good thinking. Uh, Anastasia, do you have a question for Calm Charms? Yeah, just a quick one. Um, so my question would be around your promotion strategy. So you know how these days uh, many brands and products, they engage uh, celebrities to help them to get their products somewhere up. Um, if you would kind of name one celebrity you would like to engage, who would you name? We actually don't have anyone in mind yet, but it shouldn't be too hard to find someone. Cool question. Definitely something to think about. Who can you uh, get out there and promote your brand? Well done, Calm Charms. Thank you for pitching for us today. You can see how much hard work has gone into a cool pitch and presentation. Are you feeling a little bit better now? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, we're going to let you go off uh, and have a breath and we're going to bring in the next team pitching. This is Bright Nights from Fernie Grove State High School. We've got Megan and Nikki. How are you girls? Hey, thanks. Looking good in your Bright Nights shirts. You've got uh, your whole kit ready to go. Are you ready to pitch? Yep. yep. Okay, so you get yourselves ready and start as soon as you like. I want you to think back to when you were a child. Did you ever get scared of the dark? And if you had a nightlight, would that have kept the monsters away? Children get scared, no matter who they are, or where they come from. When the sun sets, all children get scared. At Bright Nights, we don't define kids' needs based on their socioeconomic status, because at the end of the day, they have the same dreams and they share the same nightmares. Next slide. Our mission at Bright Nights is that we want to provide kids all around the world with something that makes them feel safe, something that they can rely on. Next slide. We're not just selling a bear as it may appear. We're selling a friend, a security blanket, a knight in shining armor. Next slide. Our product is a nighttime teddy bear. It has a solar panel which illuminates when charged during daylight hours to create a cuddly nightlight. We wanted to make sure that our product would be accessible to all. By using solar power, we're supplying sustainable light sources into the communities which purchase the bears and the countries suffering from electricity poverty where the bears are donated. Next slide. At present, there are currently 1.1 billion people globally suffering from electricity poverty. We understand that going to the market, our business will have some similar competitors. However, our product has some unique selling points that differentiate us from the crowd. Firstly, we offer, next slide please, we offer removable, light for charging and washing purposes. Our main competitors offer either battery or plug-in chargeable options, which require electricity. They're also selling at a higher price. And while our prices are still competitive, we are not compromising our profit return. We will be donating a bear to a child in need for every five that we sell, which we've worked into our profit margins. Next slide. We estimate it to be 15 to $17 per whole unit to produce, which we would sell for $35 AUD. This would mean we are making a 30 to 40% profit on each product, yet we see a drop to 20 to 34% profit when the cost of donated bears are added in. However, we are only modeling this first year and cost of, cost of production will fall when economy at scale is equated. Next slide. We're creating connectivity through our revolutionary buddy system, the Night Network. Next slide. On the material tag attached to each bear, there'll be our QR code. This will lead the scanner to a page on our website. This page will have a map where buyers can see where their bears have been donated and hopefully even a personalized message. This system stimulates connection between children across the world because at the end of the day, it's not about the world that we leave for the children, but the connected and empathetic children that we leave for this world. Next slide. Ladies, gentlemen, and judges, 
I bet you're expecting an emotionally charged ending, but our company is based on the harsh realities and world that our children are growing up in. While we can't solve world wars or give answers to political strife, we can give our children hope. That's what drives our company. It's only through your support and our progression through this competition that a dream becomes a reality because unfunded dreams stay dreams. Thank you. Wow, what a super strong pitch. I can see the judges clapping in the background. Very eloquent girls. In fact, I've got small children and I can see the uh, bright night bear in their rooms. Um, I'm going to throw to the judges to dig a little bit deeper into your pitch. Uh, let's go to Anastasia first. Do you have a question for the team? Yeah, uh, and before that, I just really wanted to commend you guys on the amount of research you've done uh, just you know, to get to this idea. Uh, I guess my question would be a little bit more about sustainability of your materials. So like, have you uh, thought about... Uh, uh, like what would be, I guess, the best option, uh, like say, uh, say kids have allergies sometimes, uh, or uh, they like, you know, some, some materials, they are more uh, eco-friendly, some are less. So what, what is your preference in, in this regards? So we've done some extensive research into our bears because obviously it's not just about the material in terms of hypoallergies and all that stuff. It's also about the safety regarding the light inside. And looking polyester and cotton blend for the teddy bears are the safest option because they're really low flammable. They're easy to wash, which means for kids who have allergies like dust mites, it can be easily washed, which is why you can remove the solar panel inside. And sustainability wise, we've looked at the aspect of using recycled materials and donated materials. Fantastic, thanks. Wow, good answer, girls. Great research too. Um, Zach, I'm going to come to you next. A question for the team? Yeah, super cute idea. Um, I guess, how will you go about or have you thought about organisations you would work with to deliver the bears um, into the countries that um, where the kids are that need them? Along with the partnerships that we've considered, like other businesses and companies, we have this idea of setting up centers inside of the developing countries. So that way it's an easy, accessible product. But to start off, we've looked and done some research with Solar Buddies, and they already have similar uh, lights to us, and using them to help us initially distribute it because they already have bases in these countries which are distribution systems. Wow, good thinking on the scale here, girls. Uh, Abby, over to you for a question. Uh, well, actually, Zach took mine. It was about um, who you're partnering with to distribute it. So you answered it beautifully, and um, I won't answer. Uh, make you answer another one then. Wow, what a great pitch, girls. Team Bright Nights, the second team from Fernie Grove. How are you feeling now? You got through it. Uh, it was great. Awesome. So you get to take a big deep breath and we will come back with the verdict at the end. Well done. Congratulations. Now it's time to bring in our third team. This team is from Kenmore State High School. We've got Anvita, Alicia and Alicia and they are EduGo Mobile Tutoring. Girls, how are you feeling this afternoon? Good, thank you. Awesome. So... Without any delay, I'm going to let you get straight into it. You can start whenever you're ready. Hi, I'm Invita, and these are my teammates, Alicia and Alicia. I want to start off by sharing a personal story. Next slide. Over the past few years, I've tried both in-person and online tutoring, and neither was ideal. After school, my parents didn't always have the time to drive me to tutoring sessions, and when I tried online tutoring, it just felt impersonal and disconnected. I didn't get the focused attention I needed to truly understand the material. And that's a struggle many families face. Tutoring has become essential for academic success, especially as schoolwork gets more competitive. Studies show that students who receive in-person tutoring perform 12 to 18% better on tests compared to those who don't. However, parents often find it tough to balance work and responsibilities and drive their kids to sessions. Though convenient, online options miss that connection that helps students excel. According to a University of Melbourne survey, 42% of students found online tutoring less engaging and many struggle to stay focused. That's where EduGo comes in. Next slide. 
EDUGO is Brisbane's first mobile tutoring service, bringing quality in-person tutoring directly to students right in their neighbourhoods. Our solution is simple. We take a used bus and refurbish it completely into a mobile classroom. We've already spoken to the Bus Stop Brisbane Bus Company and they're willing to provide us with a used bus. Next slide. Our bus will park at local parks across Kenmore, making it easy for students to walk, bus or bike there after school. Next. Our tutors are university students studying education. We've spoken to UQ and QUT and both are eager to potentially partner with EDUGO. They will provide tutors tutoring as part of their degree, helping students while gaining hands-on experience. We're also focused on marketing to ensure EDUGO reaches as many families as possible. We've launched a Google ad campaign, set up a website and created active Instagram and Facebook pages to engage with our community. Next slide. Additionally, we've entered into a silver sponsorship arrangement with Kemal State High School to provide additional support of school hours to supplement learning programs for our students. Next slide. Our pricing reflects our community commitment to accessibility for just $45 an hour, which is comparable to or even less than what traditional tutoring centres charge. You're getting it right in your neighbourhood and when you need it. Research from Stanford University shows that students who receive regular tutoring can improve their letter grades by 1.5 letter grades over a semester. With EDUGO, you get the same quality tutoring, but for far more convenient than ever before. Next slide. We plan to start and more with one mobile unit then expand as demand grows. We will apply for a government grant of $10,000 to cover the initial costs. And when our business gains popularity, our profit margins increase significantly and we'll reinvest in expanding EDUGO. Let's make tutoring more personal and accessible for every family. With EDUGO, we're solving real problems that parents and students face today. Join us in making a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, awesome pitch, girls, and the bright lights in the background. I love the traction, <laughs> even potentially sourcing a bus. Super cool. All right, jumping to the judges now to ask some questions. Abby, I'm going to come to you first. What would you like to know? Um, well, congratulations. I think it's underpinned by some great research and incredible initiative to get that far in, in your um, pitch. Out of interest, when you're thinking of scaling, I know you're looking at Kenmore to start, would it be, you know, going out into further inner west suburbs or, or different suburbs in Brisbane? Um, we're going to start in Kenmore and we'll just expand in the um, uh, suburbs that are close to it in that vicinity. And then hopefully we'll expand to the whole Brisbane with more mobile units. All right, very cool. Aiming to scale from within the community and around it. That's cool. Zach, coming to you next. Do you have a question for the team? Yeah, and it's probably on, um, I guess, the logistics. I'm trying to picture myself on a bus getting tutored. How many can we um, fit in a bus? Like how many students and, and tutors? And I guess, have you thought about things like noise that might carry over? Um, yes, yeah, so from what we've like researched so far, we'd have around maybe three or four tutors and around, as of now, like we're aiming for seven or eight students per session. So the noise, it may, we may have to focus on that a, bit, a little bit more, but we're thinking of like having sometimes maybe individual sessions for some students if they book it or... Yeah, so we're going to have the bus, but then if if needed, we can take the tutoring like to the park outside of the bus. So sitting outside of some students would like it more. So, yeah, that's. Well yeah, cool. done, Bye. girls. Thinking through those refinements, that's super cool. Anastasia, do you have a question for the team? Yeah, just to uh, kind of clarify a little bit. So um, uh, the bus will be actually stopping right uh at certain location uh so it's not like on the go no. all right so Definitely. every single day it travels to a different park we'll be tutoring students between uh 4 p.m to around 7 p.m yeah all right yeah. on weekends we'll have it from i believe 7 a.m no, 11 a.m to 7 p.m so that there's like more availability in the like weekends for example if students have sport in the mornings or other extracurriculars that still have time to get you there. Yeah, oh, absolutely. That provides lots of flexibility for students, yeah. Yeah, I just kind of started to picture um, someone missing the bus, so like running after them, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, and somebody like, see you in the next stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Awesome. Thank you. Good clarification there. Edge you go. Well done. Great pitch. Great idea. And some good answers to the questions. Are you feeling relieved? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Grab a drink, grab a breath, take a moment. We're going to come back to you at the end at verdict time. But now we have our fourth pitch, Aura Routes, uh, this time from regional South Australia to Loxton High School. Mitchell and Declan, how are you feeling, guys? Yeah, yeah pretty, pretty good. good. Awesome. So that was almost in perfect unison. Uh, so I'm going to leave it to you and it is over to you to start when you're ready. All right. Cool. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Mitchell. This is Declan. We're at Aura Routes. Next slide. Picture this. You walk into your favourite store buying your usual groceries. And as you walk around, you are bewildered to see that the entire store layout has changed and your favourite products have been moved. Extremely irritating, wouldn't it? Well, imagine a store worker who is stocking shelves and has up to 50 people coming up to them a day asking them where products are. Let's assume every person takes about two minutes to answer that question. That's almost two hours wasted, rolling profits and increasing staff workloads. Next slide. At Aura Routes, we are working towards a highly valuable solution for both the business and the customer. We want to install an ecosystem of devices in a store to deliver a simple solution to this problem. By installing our powerful screens throughout the store, the user will be would then simply connect their phone and input either a single item or a list of items for them shopping list. It would then run the data through the database and produce directions to the user's phone via QR code or through our app, which can then be followed accurately thanks to our high quality images and databases that would have an error rate less than one centimeter. Next slide. In the future, we plan to design a phone application that provides directions via augmented reality through the camera of the phone, but that's in the future. Uh, what makes our ideas different is our unique plan. No other companies have ever gone more in depth than the aisle number, and we want to change that. We'll be the first company to produce an ultra high quality 3D map of an entire store that is available to a customer for free. By using high quality images, we'll also be able to lower the price because we'll need less total images. Next slide. As we would like our devices to be as readily available as possible, we'll provide multiple models, a small standard and large screen. We believe that the creation of our website and app will cost around about $150,000 and each large screen will be $75,000 each. Medium screen will be about $50,000 and a small screen at $35,000. And as we build more connections with companies, we'll be able to bring our prices down dramatically about 30, 40%. Next slide. Our base cost to the business is around $50,000 for a medium-sized store, but the price is entirely dependent on what the business is looking for. There will then be an ongoing cost for keeping databases up to date and re-imaging the stores. This will be around $20,000, but it's again, dependent on the store's needs. Next slide. Overall, in a world of convenience and efficiency, it is very important which why we created this business. We want to make life easier, faster, and more enjoyable for everyone from the business to the customer. It's now time to re revolutionize shopping with the delightful experience of Aura Routes. Next slide. That's all. Wow. The boys from Loxton bringing technology to the supermarket. Look, I completely get the problem. I really get frustrated when my very automated pathway through my grocery store uh, is changed. And yep, I get it. So judges, uh, let's dig deeper into team aura routes. Uh, let's go to Abby first. Hi guys, that was um, really great and um, I really appreciate your presentation. Um, I'm interested in the, the partnership with um, the stores and, and how you gather that data or plan to gather the data of, of where everything's located. Yeah, definitely. So a lot of supermarkets like your Woolies, your Coles, Foodland, all the rest of it, they've all got like a database already made. So it'd be as simple as just connecting to that. Yeah, and it would just be working with them, see what they prefer. All right. Thank you, guys. Well done. Uh, let's go to Anastasia. Do you have a question for Aura Routes? Well, yeah, really, really great presentation. Thanks, guys. Um, I guess, like, yeah, my question would be around um, some uh, visual communication strategy. So, say, um, uh, these days, the apps, they, well, um, 
the developers of the apps, they aim uh, to make them uh, as uh, inclusive as possible. So allowing people say with some uh, uh, vision problem to also use those services. So have you uh, thought about like, how would you also kind of include, you know, something into the design of the app uh, to help people with some sort of, you know, issues with the vision to also effectively use the app and find those projects, uh, products. Yeah. Yeah, it would just be as simple as uh, connecting, more well, allowing it to be used through a voice, um, voice line, whatever they want to say. You know, we'll block through. Yeah. All right. So thinking through that accessibility, well done. Okay, Zach, let's jump to you. Question for the team. Can I be a bit cheeky and ask us too? I guess first of all, like, <laughs> how did you guys come up with the idea? And and the second part is, how big do you think the market is? for you guys to be able to sell into like in terms of dollar figures have you looked into that so we came up with the idea by well i mainly work at a supermarket and i always have people coming up to me and asking me where stuff is and there was this guy recently who was looking for something walked off i called him called him over see what he wanted because he looked a little bit disappointed it was just a simple can of dog food showed him where it was made a sale um and then it'll probably be it's a idea we'll be able to expand quite quite well, um, and so yeah, we'll be able to expand it pretty well. We hope to make the profit go into helping the customer. All right, nice. some insider knowledge there from uh, working in the store. That's cool. Well done, boys. Uh, great idea, great pitch. Um, and we've got one semi final left. So we're going to let those boys head off and have a break. And we are going to bring in the team from Queensland Academies. We have Co, Liam, and Aaron. This is Team Shadow. How are you going there, boys? We're pretty nervous, but we're going to get this done. Well done. Look, you've had a long wait. You are the final pitch in the semifinals. And so it's over to you. Feel free to start as soon as you're ready. Yep. Next slide. I hate the whole process of job shadowing. Calling, sending emails, and being left on read for weeks just to be told no. It made me give up on trying to get work experience to find my passion. Many young students our age find this process to be relatable, unsure of their futures. But as a result, they often develop crippling anxiety, deep regret and job dissatisfaction, hampering personal development for many young students. Next slide. Lack of easy access to job shadowing opportunities. That is our problem. We are solving this problem for young students, both high schoolers and university students. This problem is worth solving as over half of current young students feel anxiety about the future, a statistic that has been gradually growing since 2020. Anxiety can lead to depression, and it is a kind of feeling that I wouldn't wish upon anyone, and as such, why we must solve it. Our solution is a website that lists both virtual and in-person job shadowing opportunities provided by independent businesses for students to book upon paying a one-time fee. We focus on listing generalized job shadowing opportunities, specifically for young students, something no other platform does. Next slide. Our primary audience are young students, and we will initially advertise our business on high school websites and assemblies, then later expand onto university campuses, websites, and assemblies. Next slide. Our business will generate money by selling job shadowing opportunities based on demand by customers. High school students can show us their preferred professions and we can match it. Opportunities will be set in bundles, usually. Two job shadowing opportunities, we can put it at a 10% discount for three, 15%, and so on and so forth. In the future, we plan to expand by offering internships and job listings creating partnerships with schools, and targeting people who quit their jobs. Next slide. Why us? Because we are students. As students, we are able to advertise for free on high school assemblies, use surveys to research the best course of action, and understand the perspective of young students. Next slide. Next slide. Oh. 
The team at Shadow have prototyped the website as seen here. Next slide. Next slide, yep. Please join us in our mission to transform career exploration and provide a direction for young students everywhere. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, team Shadow. Fantastic. A solution for a target market that you know all about. That's awesome. Let's jump to Zach for the first question. Yeah, just on the financial side, sorry, my mind got a bit confused there. So you're looking at funding it. Who, who pays for it? Is it the student or the business advertising? Sorry, I might have missed that. So initially, we're looking at forcing students to pay for it and then paying the business a royalty of about 10% on the customers who pay on the job shadowing opportunities so that businesses provide the job shadowing opportunities to us. And what's the price point for the student? Sorry, again, second question. About $30, but that changes based on how popular the job is. For example, maybe mechanical engineering is more popular than accounting, right? So that will be that will cost more. All right. Thank you, Zach. Digging deeper into the finances. Uh, Anastasia, next, we're going to jump to you. Do you have a question for the team? Uh, as your platform, you've said you are making a website. Uh, have you considered also maybe doing an app? Because, uh, you know, everybody expects an app and like having something on their mobile device these days. Yeah. So at first, we're planning on building the website. And after that, we plan on looking at the app. All right, thank you, boys. Well done. And Abby, for our final question, what would you like to know? Thanks so much for presenting and also um, sharing your experience. It added a real depth to your presentation. Um, I'm interested in your target market being young students, and I think they have a certain vulnerability in workplaces and maybe some safety issues. Is there anything you've just considered in terms of vetting the workplaces and make sure they're um, authentic? What do you might? What do you mean by that question? Thing? Sorry. That it's that at their real workplaces and that the students' safety will be prioritized. Do you mean that for job shadowing opportunities that are dangerous, how we plan on just regulating that and ensuring their safety? Yeah, or vetting people who are posting the the job shadow opportunities to make sure they're safe. So for that part. We plan on giving a survey to the students who will be going on the job sharing opportunity. And after that, we'll send a basic agenda to the job, to the business that will be providing the job sharing opportunity. And we'll also set, set some basic boundaries such as health, safety, and for them to just inform us about that. And then we can work on that as well. Thank you. Well done. Thinking through some of that risk management as part of the business. That's awesome work. Uh, boys, you're feeling better now. You got through it. You did a great job. Okay. So now it is time uh, to let the judges go off to their deliberations. The pressure transfers to them. The young people have done a brilliant job and the difficult decision is now over to our judges to pick a winner and a runner up. So we've said goodbye, they're gone. Now the, the, the responsibility also falls on you. The official vote for the People's Choice Award is open and the link is coming up on your screen. So it's time to jump in, vote for your favorite, who is, as you know, the People's Choice winner from this semifinal has a chance to go in to the draw as a wild card in our showcase at the grand final. It's really important. We've had so much incredible support around our teams coming through with hundreds and hundreds of vote, votes for People's Choice throughout the eight semifinals. So we're going to put on some tunes. We're going to leave the QR code up on the screen. We're going to give the judges five minutes or so for their deliberations, and we'll come back for the big announcement. All right, get voting. All right, I've been given the cue, which means the judges have returned and decisions have been made. Whilst the judges have been deliberating, we've been collecting the People's Choice votes left, right, and centre, outstanding and very close. I'll reveal the People's Choice winner in a moment. 
So in the meantime, we've got the judges back on screen. We're going to jump to the judges for the runner up first. And then after that, we'll jump back for the winning team. A reminder that the runner ups go into the showcase at the grand final and the winner will be going to pitch on stage. Anastasia, I believe you're going to be making the announcement. Can you give us the runner up team for this semi final? Yes, sure. Well, first of all, this was incredibly difficult decision to make. And um, our team was like really, you know, discussing a lot of things. And like, first of all, guys, congratulations to all of you. All the projects are very amazing and uh, they've all have potential. And it's just like for, you know, like, you know how it works. We really need to just, you know, pick uh, one winner and the runner up. And in saying that our runner up is uh, Bright Nights. Um, well done, Bright Nights. But hold on on the win, Anastasia. Just Bright Nights for the minute. Uh, Bright Nights, well done. Give us a wave. There you are. You're on screen. That's awesome. Congratulations. You are heading to the showcase at the grand final. And now we can jump back to Anastasia again. The team pitching in the grand final for 2024. Who will it be? Da, 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 da. <laughs> so, well, again, that was really hard decision to make. Uh, however, like uh, the project that uh, appealed to all three of us uh, very much was Aura Routes. Uh, so congratulations, oh. guys. Well uh, done, Aura Routes. The boys from Loxton, congratulations. How are you feeling? Yeah, uh, pretty good, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. good. Awesome. It's low key, but it's it, I love the vibe. It's great. Congratulations, Aura Routes, Loxton High School. That's Mitchell and Declan, who will be moving through to the grand final in Brisbane. Wow. Okay. So what's left now is the People's Choice Award. So we have the votes coming through. You've been voting. It's been incredibly close. And I can announce that the winners, uh, the winners of this semi-final number eight people's vote is Echigo Mobile Tutoring from Kenmore State High. Well done, girls. You're come well, you're in the draw as a wild card to make it through, hopefully, potentially, to the grand final uh in several weeks' time. Congratulations to Edugo. Wow. Now, judges, I don't know how you did that. Uh, I've been saying in all of the semifinals I've been hosting, I much prefer to host than be in the judges' deliberations. It was outstanding. I really appreciate you carving the time to be here, asking great questions, giving us your feedback, your advice, and your encouragement. Thank you for your time today. Oh, wow. So that's been fantastic work. Now, if you're watching and you are keen and you're keen to see these teams take the stage or uh, showcase their idea at our national grand final, then tickets are open now. The code is on your screen. We'd love for you to join us in person at the Trifford in Brisbane if you're available. But the whole event will also be streamed live. So if you'd love to stay in your pajamas and grab a ticket dive in, snag a ticket, but get in early. It will be a sellout. Wow. Excellent work to our teams. We can't wait to see all of our teams that have made it through to the grand final. That is it for our eight semifinals. I'd really love to take this opportunity since it's the last semifinal to do a big shout out to the team in the background uh, Future Anything have a huge team involved here. We've got Jess and Brianna who have been in the background uh, preparing everything from an operations point of view. Absolutely outstanding. Andrew's been running our tech, doing a brilliant, brilliant job. Couldn't do it without him. Uh, Nick, thank you so much for your guidance uh, of the whole process. Uh, Leanne has been helping with mentoring as well. And Jared and I have been super excited to not only get to mentor these teams, but also host these semifinals. And of course, we also have a huge team of support around all these young people uh, back in their schools, friends, family, amazing teachers. Uh, we have, uh, we know of huge amounts of support for these young people. So if you've had a good time and you've enjoyed it, jump in and grab tickets for our grand final. It's going to be a hot competition. 
We know who's going through. Congratulations to all teams. Congratulations to everyone that is who has pitched. It is a really huge effort to get through this far. You got through your nerves and you got through your excitement and you delivered ec excellent pitches all around. So thank you so much to everybody that's been involved and we look forward to seeing you at the 2024 Grand Final. Thank you.